In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous Elizabeth Mary quilt. Hi, I'm Jo from Elsie Grays and today I'm going to step you through how to make the Elizabeth Mary quilt. This is one of my favourite quilts. The background fabric I've used is a cotton linen, Tilda Windy Days for the fabric range. I've done big stitch quilting here and our gorgeous spade crocheted edge. Requirements needed to make the Elizabeth Mary quilt is firstly the Elizabeth Mary pattern, which includes your template and papers, a glue pen, a marking pen, a pair of sharp scissors, Roxanne's applique glue, bottom line thread, DMC perlate for big stitch quilting, and my favourite Fiddlesticks Wren for the crocheted edge. Assorted fabrics for the melons. I used 20 different fabrics and the range was Tilda Windy Days. Background linen fabric in a favourite colour. Make sure your background fabric is nicely ironed. With your marking pen, you're going to draw a grid of eight and a half by eight and a half on the background fabric. I used a Frickson pen. So I find my centre seam and I'm going 4.25 out this way, a 4.25 out this way, which will make it an eight and a half inch grid. Now just remember with a Frickson pen, if you iron it, it will disappear and we don't want that. Once you have finished drawing up your grid, I then go back and draw diagonal lines so it's easy for me to place my melons. And it should look like this. Now you have completed drawing the grid on your background linen, we can now start cutting out our melons. There is two ways you can do this. First option is using the Elsie Gray's template and with your rotary cutter cutting around the template. I have layered the, the, the two fabrics together. My preferred method is to draw them and cut them with scissors. So just on the wrong side of the fabric, again with your marking pen, whether it's a Frickson pen or a blue pen, just draw around the template and cut with your scissors. On each square, I have four different fabrics. Once you have cut out your 144 melons, the next step is to glue your fabric to your paper. I start with a, just a strip of glue down the middle on the paper, place onto the fabric, just so it holds it in place and start gluing and I I turn over as I, as I go and that's just the quarter inch seam. Now it's really important to get these two ends perfect, otherwise they will not sit in your eight and a half inch square grid. So 
so your two ends must be tight on the paper. Continue gluing your fabric to your papers. Once you have done 144 melons, it's time to glue them down and applique. Once you have glued all your melons, we're just going to do a test fit to see if they fit nicely on your grids. So from corner to corner, just lay them out. And don't worry about these little tails because we're going to tuck those in when we applique them down and they fit beautifully. With your Roxanne's glue, we're just going to pop some little dots all the way around. Not a lot, just hopefully you can see that. And then place on your fabric. Now remember you can't iron these if you've used a Frixen pen, otherwise your grid will all disappear. I sometimes put books on top to weigh them down so the glue will stick. You can probably see that better on that fabric. And you can sort of manoeuvre them around a little bit to get your nice round shape. So earlier I talked about making sure that your, when you glue your fabric on the points, they must be really tight on that paper and that's the reason why. If they're a bit baggy or not sitting, not glued properly, you will not fit them into your grid. Once you have glued all your melons down, it's time to applique. This is another little sample that I'm just working on at the moment, which uses the same method. As you can see on this one, I haven't quite got to the centres there, but I'm not too concerned about that because on my little cushion here, I've just popped some little hexes in between. So don't stress too much if they don't quite meet in the middle. Starting the applique, I start in the corner here and I tend to just sort of go around the shape all the way around and I do one square at a time. The needle I use is a Gold Eye Milliner's number no. 9 needle and my bottom line thread and I'm just going to applique that shape down. I'll start in that little corner and sew all the way around. Now you're not sewing through the paper, right on the very edge, in between the fabric and the paper. I'm doing a little applique stitch. So I've appliqued the four melons on this block and now it's time to remove the paper. So I turn my work over and I'm not sure if you can see the stitches there, but now it's time to cut the back away and I just a little pinch and I'm just going to cut that linen a bit more than a quarter inch. And then I'm just going to pop this paper out. And hopefully you haven't got too much glue on there so they should just pop out just nicely. And you can reuse your papers as long as you're careful when you're pulling them out. And that's how it'll look when you take out all your papers. Once you have appliqued all your melons and carefully removed the papers, that completes part one of the Elizabeth Mary quilt. 
In part two, I will demonstrate big stitch quilting and talk about the spade crocheted edge. The Elizabeth Mary template pattern and paper kit is available on our website and is the recommended option, or a PDF pattern download is also available. A huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We love all the comments, so please keep them coming. Coming up very soon, is our latest creation from Tilda's new range, Hibernation. Sleeping animals and gorgeous autumn shades are the theme of this range. Dusty colours such as nutty browns, hibiscus red, blues and sage give this collection the timeless vintage look. Hibernation arrives in October. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and keep those lovely comments coming.